we don't like to start late, um, <clears throat> usually. <laughs> We're a little late today. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. My name is Rachel Muhammad, and I am going to be your contest master today. You can welcome me. <laughs> Thank you. 
And with that being said, I'm going to have Tim say something real quick. It's real quick. This contest is being recorded and it will be made available within 48 hours to the contestants. Please email me, email me or your division governor for access. It will remain private until the, con until the conference, at which point it will be made public. If you need to opt out or do not want to be filmed with your speech, please let me know so I can get a good look at you and take a picture and make sure you're not included in the final edited copy. Thank you. And with that, let's let the contest begin.
So it's very, very important that they're they're very consistent within 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 reading. So and it just doesn't carry <coughs> over to children. It carries over to us as adults, whether we have just a high school diploma, we have a doctor, even an advanced professional degree such as a medical degree, or even a law degree. I mean, we can still, the, the process is gradual, we can still advance and be advanced as, advanced as readers. And then that, that, once our advancement as readers becomes, it, make, it gives us confidence as learners. Not as, not as just learners for ourselves, we can become a better, a be, as a community, we can be a better educated community, and we can share. We can share. Right. We can share ideas. So those are some of the. Those are some of the benefits that would help us. And like I said before, the topic of the speech, it really starts with us. Within the, it starts within the home. So and that's why it's very, very grad. It's very beneficial that we do have a, have we do our role models. Not just for but we can be role models for each other as well. So thank you very much. Oh, really? 
<laughs> well, his mom. Good job. Mom. Uh, so you probably will join a club that's down on the south side of the park. He lives south this way. Oh. That's okay. Go find your club. Real soon. We will. And we really want to make sure we thank you seriously for participating today. I know this has to be something that's not expected. What do you know about Toastmasters? I know it's a, it's a public speaking group and that, uh, that it's a worldwide speaking group and that they do focus on the area of public speaking and you know, a wide range of topics. You know, I know that there's, I know that sometimes they do follow rules, you know, such as, but I know there's a rule and procedures, there's policies, you know, and I do, I am familiar with the policies of public speaking, but, you know, they do all have a variety of nuances of, of the field of public speaking. It's a real benefit to us. It's a real benefit to us members. So it's a very progressive group. <laughs> we like to think of ourselves as educating people on public speaking. Of course. Yes. And we know how passionate you are about education. <laughs> so, was there anything else that you'd like to say to the audience? Well, like I said earlier, it's a very, it's a privilege to be here, and you know, just the. Out of honesty, I mean, I was, it took a lot for me to stand up and do this, you know, you know especially in front of a bunch of strangers. You know, so it's, so I made a designation to go. I said to myself, before I started, I was going to look at everybody, all 30 people standing there. So, you know, I didn't do that. I liked myself. Yeah. <laughs> I to myself. Jessica Walden, speech evaluation contestant number one, speech evaluation contestant number one, Jessica Walden. Anybody else walk away excited about that? You gave us an immediate 
call to action, and then immediately started describing, have books, have newspapers, have magazines, all of these different avenues that we could use to bring print home, and maybe go to the library with our kids so that they know that literacy is something that belongs to them and something important as well. I really thought that you grabbed our attention, gave us that immediate call to action, and really made it impressive was you immediately had numbers at your fingertips. The percentages of how many people check out books. I wish I had written that down faster because I'm going to come to you afterwards to get a little bit of that statistical backup because I'm going to use it with my pieces and it at home. You appeared very comfortable up here and what I really appreciate is you didn't walk all over. You didn't fidget a lot. You let the power of your point communicate to us the importance and the gravity of this issue. And I could hear it in your voice and sincerity and the passion, and I really appreciate you sharing something that's obviously a personal goal for you. If there are any examples of improvement that I would encourage you to add to this speech, because I think this speech needs to be said often and frequently, and I really hope that you continue to evolve this, I would want you to include personal stories. Tell us about the times. What did you check out at that library when you realized that nobody was picking up books? I want to know what you checked out because I still go to the library. I make sure that I check out books that maybe aren't so popular so that this important part of our cultural heritage stays in our communities. I would ask you to name favorite pieces of media, kinds of books or magazines that have a personal connection to you. But most importantly, let's talk about some more activities. So many of the movies that are out now start as books. Talk about activities like you can read this book together and then go see the movie with your child and talk to them about what did they leave out? Well, what did you like? Did these characters look the way that your imagination helped them create? And I think that would be an incredible call to action and I think would inspire everyone in this room to believe that literacy begins at home. Thank you. Sherilyn Benaway, contestant number two. Speech evaluation contestant number two, Sherilyn Benaway. Thank you, contest master, dignitaries, fellow toastmasters and guests, and especially you, James. I just wanted to say congratulations. You did a great job. I really enjoyed your speech. You really got my attention when you started out with saying that literacy starts within the home. I completely agree with that. You did a great job of making me feel compelled to leave here, go home, and make sure my kids read tonight. I, you did a great job by doing, and the way you did that was by providing the stats for one thing. Those stats were alarming. 21.3 adults over the age of 25 years old are illiterate. That's, that's very concerning. It's also just as concerning to think that our public schools are performing that poorly when it comes to standardized tests. That's alarming and compelling, and you did a great job of making me think that and, and feel that. 
You also kept the room engaged. You did a great job with eye contact, your body language. You kept the room's attention. I paid attention. You paid. You did a good job with doing that as well. I think that you're doing a great job as a speaker. You, you did. You, you were very good at providing substantive information. If I had to suggest anything to you, I'd like to recommend that the next time you see you were a little nervous. I could tell that. So maybe the next time, one of the things that works for me is I try to make sure that I take a breath, kind of deep breathe, pause, remember that I've prepared myself, I've organized this, I've worked at it, and I know that I'm doing a good job. And it kind of helps me stay focused and, and, and definitely a lot, a lot more relaxed because I know it gets a little bit nerve-wracking when you're standing in front of a lot of people. But let me just encourage you to continue on your journey as a Toastmaster. You're doing a great job. I can see great potential in you, and I appreciate your speech. Thank you. May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Melissa Wolnarowski, <coughs> speech evaluation contestant number three. Speech evaluation contestant number three, Melissa Wolnarowski. Thank you, Madam Topic or er, Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, dignitaries, guests, and especially. James. This was a great topic. I'd like to start out by sharing a few things that I really appreciated about today's topic, target speech. The first thing was the topic itself. I think it's something we can all relate to. We all had those moments as a child really enjoying reading. We all know how much we learned from it. And the topic of literacy in today's world is really important, especially with all of the issues that are happening with our education system. So it was a really relevant and timely topic that I appreciated hearing about. There was also really good delivery. Walked around the room, engaged us, there were some gestures. If I were to give a few tips in Toastmasters, sometimes we get the opportunity to present a speech more than once. And this is the opportunity to really reflect on how did it go and what are some things that I could build on that went really well, and what are some things that maybe the next time I give this speech I could work on to improve a little bit more. I had the benefit of sitting right here in the front row, so I had no problem hearing, but I'm not sure about the vocal projection for those in the back of the room. It didn't seem very loud to me, so maybe that's something to kind of lift up and project like you're talking to the people all the way in the back. That's just one kind of style thing. Another thing I was thinking of was the intro was sort of starting and opening in a way that's going to grab the audience's attention. So there were a lot of really compelling statistics. I really appreciated the research. 20%, around 20% of adults are literate. That's, that's crazy. That's huge. That's a lot. So what if we opened the speech with that? What if you opened the speech with, did you know that just 20% of adults in today's world are literate? That'd be something really to kind of grab people's attention, or maybe starting out with a story about a favorite childhood memory involving reading and how important reading is to you. 
some way to kind of draw the audience in. The second thing I was thinking about was organization. So there were a lot of really important points that happened throughout the speech, but there might have been some opportunity to organize them in a way. Um, in Toastmasters, a lot of times we think about speeches in three points. So maybe problem, solution, and benefits. So this is the problem with reading in today's world. This is the solution. We can engage in digital media and do all kinds of other opportunities there. And then benefits. This is why it's important and this is how it can benefit your community. Overall, I thought it was a really great speech, an engaging topic, and appreciate so much you sharing and for everyone else for being here tonight to participate in the contest. Madam, Madam Contest Minister. something that is passionate for you. Literacy begins at the home, and that is certainly true. One of the things that I noticed immediately, you came up front and you planted yourself. That's good. You always want to make sure that you get your footing when you walk into the room, <coughs> address the crowd, and make sure that you make eye contact with them. And so you came up front and you did that very thing. The other thing is that you would give eye contact on both ends of the room. I saw you walk to this end, and I saw you walk down here, and you did engage, I wanted to say the congregation. <laughs> <laughs> you gave us facts. You had some statistics, which is always great when you're talking about something that you're passionate about and something that we can all get involved in. Now, here are some things I think you might want to consider. When you come up to do your speech, make sure that not only you dress the contest chair, but make sure you dress the entire audience. Make sure that when you are speaking, you project when you're in a room so that everyone from the front all the way to the back can hear you. You don't want anyone to miss any of the information. Another thing I thought that would bring life to your speech was vocal variety. Even though you are passionate about literacy and the fact that it begins at home, you could have given us some points that maybe we might want to get involved, how we could help with that, how we might have nieces or nephews or children that we want to help with literacy how we can all get involved, because this is a very universal topic. So those are some things I thought that you could improve upon. And I would like to leave you with this. You have great potential to be an awesome speaker. And I'm <coughs> sure that the fact that you came up here tonight and gave us a speech 
let us know that you desire to be a great speaker. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. Come up, give us a great speech, and receive your standing ovation. Because James, I believe that you have excellent potential as a public speaker. Madam Conchess Chair. Everyone, please remain silent while the judges complete their ballots and have them collected by the ballot count. Contest master, all ballots have been accounted. Thank you. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting for the votes to be counted, we're going to hear from our club growth director. Yeah, gotcha. Iqbal Akja, who will be giving us exciting details about the District 30 Conference. Iqbal? All right. excitement because I'm here to tell you about the biggest event about that Toastmasters has that is going to kick off 2015 and usher in New Year's Eve. All right. It is that good. Right. So what am I talking about? The Fall Conference. You guys are on fire too. You already know what I'm going to say. So let me tell you a couple of things that might entice you as to why if you were thinking about going, why you will be going. Number one, the who. Does anybody know? And I'm sure many of you have been to a conference or a TLI before. Yes? Yes. yes. Awesome. So you know that when District 30 does something well, they do it right. And they bring in a high quality, high professional speaker to come in and impart information, knowledge, and experience to us so that we go home and we take that and we process it and give it to others, right? Yes. Right. So guess who we are bringing to the District 30 Fall Conference? Who? Who? I'm so glad you all asked. <laughs> Mr. Craig Valentine. Yeah. Now, for the three people in this room that did not clap because they do not know who Craig Valentine is, that's okay, because I was like you a few months ago myself. 
<laughs> Greg Valentine is the 1999 World Champion of Public Speaking Award winner for Toastmasters. And he has come to District 30 several times. And when you think about that, you think, I've seen it before, but let me tell you, when somebody does something well, you want them to come back because they have grown, and when they grow, you grow too. Now the next question is, well, what else is there for me besides awesome Craig? Well, let me tell you, not only are you going to be able to see Craig three times, one at the Achievers Breakfast, and for those of you that have won any award of any kind, a CC, a CL, an ACB, an ALB, or anything higher than that, you will be invited for a free breakfast. Saturday morning, free breakfast. Come on, guys. Yay, I mean, Denny's can't top that. I lost <laughs> that. Not on District 30. So, number one, Craig Valentine will give us his knowledge of Achievers Breakfast. He'll also speak to us as the keynote speaker at 9 o'clock, and then again at the lunchtime breakfast as well, or at the lunchtime session as well. But even more so, that all of us as Toastmasters will be able to learn from other Toastmasters that will be there presenting on other topics as well. Now the question may come up, well, okay, that's all nice and good, but what else is it for me? Because, hey, I'm pretty, I'm pretty tight with my time. I want to know if I'm going to come, I'm going to get the most out of this. Well, let me tell you a few other things. Number one, if for all of you that are here tonight, all of you have made friends with the individuals that are in this room. Yes, all 35 yes. of us are best friends, brothers and sisters. <laughs> now can you imagine? taking the networking and the love that you have for each other and multiplying it by 20, 30, 40. Not only tonight are you in a room with 30, 40 of your best friends, but you can be in a room with about a thousand plus Toastmasters across the city, building new relationships, learning from each other, expanding your own professional networks. There is so much to gain from this. Now, the next question is, when is this awesome contest? And when is this awesome conference? Well, let me tell you, it will be on November 7th. It is a Saturday, and it will start at 7 o'clock with the Achievers Breakfast, and it will go probably till about 6 o'clock at night, but, you know, some Toastmasters like to party a little bit more than others. So we'll be there for quite some time, and it will be at the Countryside Banquets in Countryside, Illinois. Now, I think the biggest thing, that if I haven't sold you on this conference yet, I must tell you that all of you took time out of your busy days and busy nights to be here tonight to support a contestant or your club. Well, the winner of tonight's contest are going to go on and compete at the district contest, and that will be here. So, I've given you the who, I've given you the what, the where, the where, but now the why. Because we are Toastmasters, and we are all in this for our own professional development and for becoming better communicators and better speakers. I expect to see all of you there. Madam <laughs> Contest. <laughs> <laughs> he got that. At this time, I'm going to call for our 20 minute break. Everybody. Ah, I have something. Yeah, one more thing. One second. Oh, we have an educational <coughs> musical selection. Oh. Mr. Dushan Mosley. <coughs>
ISU to intermission, which is just one door to the right. Come back.